Executive session meeting, uh, the August 4th special call meeting, August 10th executive session meeting, August 10th work session meetings, August 11th exec executive session meeting, August 11th regular meeting minutes, August 11th public comment meeting, August 18th executive session meeting, and August 15th special call meeting. Does anyone have any corrections or amendments to those meetings? Okay. I will make a motion those minutes be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Sandy, you want to give us a financial statement, please? This is the financial report for August 31st. Each department should be at 67% of their expenditure budget used. Departments over budget as of August 31st are tax assessors at 68%, parks and recreation at 69%, and airport at 74%. Overall, we are at 46% of the total revenue budget received and 57% of the total expenditure budget used. Total revenue received to date, $15,997,417. Total expenditures to date, $19,665,993. Any questions for Sandy? Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Brings us to unfinished business. Um, here we you. Uh, I just have received several comments, maybe I should say a few comments, that some cabin owners are renting their cabins on a short-term basis, even in subdivisions where it's not allowed by the, by the subdivision. I think it might be a good idea if we place a reminder and or notice in the local paper briefly outlining the requirements to collect for the owners to collect the lodging tax and in a nice way what the consequences are if you do not. Okay, that's fine by me. 
I don't, I don't think we need a no. resolution for that. So, um, if uh, would you want to word it and give it to Edwina? Or would you rather Edwina word it and ask it? I just said, I think it just so happens to have already done that. Uh, David what probably has the consequences. Sir. David probably has the, con the consequences that we can put in there. I was going to ask what the consequences were. Well, let's just make it a friendly notice. Well, yeah, but uh, I agree. A friendly notice, but later on we have to say something. That, that's fine. Yeah, we'll leave the consequences out. The second one may have to have some consequences. Okay. The first one, let's just do it as a friendly notice. Okay, it went on. I'll work on that. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. So at this point, I'd like to introduce our new uh, supervisor at the uh, the UGA building with the our county agents, who is also responsible for our wonderful 4-H program, and she's going to introduce some folks to us and, and tell us about their accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thank you. Yes. Okay. Hi, so I'm Nancy Adams. I come to you from Cherokee County, born and raised. Um, I am a farm girl at heart. My parents had a greenhouse, so green thumb all around. Um, I've been a school teacher for the last 10 years, um, agriculture teacher, science teacher in the middle school arena. And it was time to return to my 4-H roots. So I have, I accepted this position. This is my second month here in Gilmer. I'm your new fax agent, family and consumer science agent. Um, the Extension Office has three branches from UGA Research Specialties, um, and we're housed in each county. Um, there's an Agriculture Branch, a 4-H Branch, and a Family and Consumer Science Branch. So, um, I'm also the Supervisor for the County Extension Office. Ms. Michelle Gill is our 4-H agent. She's actually at the, um, another county-wide thing today, but I wanted to brag because I think it's important when our youth are doing something really incredible. I want to brag on them. Um, so our 4-H, and I'm going to read this part just so I make sure I say all the right things. Our Gilmer County 4-H Food Showcase team competed in the Great American Seafood Challenge. The team competed in the Great American Seafood Cook-Off 4-H edition in New Orleans, Louisiana on August 7th, 2022. The team was invited to represent Georgia after qualifying through the State Food Showcase competition. The requirement was to prepare a seafood dish featuring Georgia-grown products, which were low in sodium and under 750 calories. That's hard. Um, they prepared shrimp mousse stuffed lane snapper with Georgia-grown succotash. It was good. I tried it. The dish was 589 calories. They prepared a five-minute speech, which explained the preparation steps, food safety concerns, how the dish represented Georgia, and the overall economic impact those products used contributed to our Georgia economy. The team placed in the top five overall in the national competition. They did very well for the first time being invited. Um, the three senior members of that team were Jocelyn Burka, who is away at college, Caitlin Gill, who is busy tonight representing us on the softball team, and Audrey Abgate, who is here and present, and um, I just want to give her some kudos. And her sister is on our junior food showcase team. She's also um, present with us as well as, as her parents who are supportive of this. So I just really think it's very important when we see good things happening with our youth that we tell them that because y'all don't get told enough Thank you for representing Gilmer and doing such a great job. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. The second one is for Mary Frances Mulkey from A1 Agricultural to R1 Residential Low Density. This is to cut out uh, 1.5 acres from, from a larger A1, um, from a larger A1 um, parcel that is being sold and use that uh, 1.5 acres for a um, family residence, a single residence home. Uh, I would make a motion that be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Which brings us to citizens wishing to speak. I want credit for remembering this. <laughs> so, um, anybody that would like to make any comments on any subject, Um, next item would be discussion and possible action of consideration of leasing a portion of River Park. We've uh, had a number of conversations about that and, and uh, with the Park and Rec Director as well. And the, his recommendation is that we not do that. Uh, and I think we're all pretty much in, uh, in agreement with that, so I would make a motion that uh, that not uh, that we not lease a portion of the River Park. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And should we clarify that we're uh, possibly okay with renting it? No. Just for the. Wouldn't hurt the to clarify that you know we're we're okay if somebody wants to rent a field or something like that, just not a permanent lease. Right, and do that through the Park and Rec Director. Correct, yes. Discussion of possible action of Gilmer County becoming a Benton Mackay Thank you. trail <laughs> community. So. Um, yes, and I believe, Ken, I see you're here now. Would you like to say a few words now? I'd be glad to. Thank you very much. Sure. Just introduce yourself up there at the podium. And tell us about this invitation. My name is Ken Sisson. I'm a president of the Benton Mackay Trail Association uh, for, for the last two years. Uh, we invite Gilmer County to, to join us in becoming a um, BMTA trail community along with LJ and, and East LJ. I'm sure you know as you drive north uh, on 515 to, to, to as far as Cherry Log, uh, they, they, there's those trail signs. Uh, our trail crosses 515 just a few miles uh, up the road. Uh, the southern terminus, the beginning point, if you're going north of the trail, is not far away on Springer Mountain. Uh, we go past uh, any number of landmarks that I'm sure uh, Many of you, some of you at least, uh, enjoy the, the, uh, the area at Three Forks and Long Creek Falls there, the, uh, the suspension bridge over the Dakota River, the, the longest one of its kind in the eastern U.S., uh, Wall Branch Falls, uh, uh, Weaver Creek, Bushy Head Gap, uh, just uh, gorgeous, beautiful hiking here. And, uh, We think this is a kind of a win-win opportunity that, uh, that our activities uh, promote uh, Gilmer County and uh, Gilmer County becoming a, a trail community with us would uh, help promote us as well. I think uh, this would be a, a good thing for us. I don't see a downside to it with the exception possibly that you are never going to get me on that suspension bridge. <laughs> 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 so. But uh, other than that, uh, I think it would be a, a great idea myself. And so I would make a motion that it be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Ken. And thank you so much for all the organization does for the trail and this area. Discussion and possible action on improving memorandum of understanding between the Board of Education and Gilmer County Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Um, I think there was a little bit of cleanup done on that, but are y'all okay with it as, as it is now? 
couple more cleanups. Okay. They're minor. Then let's, what I'll do then, and I'm going to make a motion that we approve that with the cleanups that you Second. mentioned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Last item is discussion of possible action on the Gilmer County Fire Rescue Medical Director Agreement. And I believe there's some questions on that if you can come up, Chief. Good evening. Right. The more I think about this, the more I don't understand. Um, as I understand it, it the, <clears throat> you're wanting to get over the EMTs would be able to administer, and make this long term, or do certain treatments that you're not allowed to do now because the emergency room here does not allow that. I'm a little what we want to do is just broaden the scope of their practice to let them practice within what the state allows them to, to practice. For, pre-hospital medicine in the field. So we have the, ge we're geographically challenged, we have longer response times. Uh, in more urban and suburban areas, they have a quick turnover with patients through to the hospital pretty quick. You know, we may be with a patient 30 minutes, you know, just getting to a call, and then we may have to transport them to Northside Cherokee, and. We may have them for 45 minutes to an hour versus 10 to 15 minutes in a suburban, urban environment. So by doing broadening the scope of our practice, it, it allows us to enhance the, the patient care that we're allowed to do. Uh, under the current medical direction, we're, we're kind of limited. Uh, the new medical director that we're looking to use specializes in disaster management, pre-hospital and EMS care. I mean, that, that's his niche, that's what he does. And he's willing to, to work with us to allow us to broaden our scope of practice and uh, actually come to the station. And if there's any training that needs to be done associated with that, that would occur. Can you give an example of what would uh, represent broadening your scope? Uh, it may just be a medication that we could give that currently under our protocols we're not allowed to, to prescribe for maybe a stroke or cardiac issue, uh, something similar as ketamine as a uh, narcotic or something that is used for pain management. Uh, it was, we have gone through that recently, but it wasn't an easy process to do. So you would do that without further doctor contact, without further physician contact? As far as... Okay, the EMT says, decides we need to use this medication. Right. If it's in our protocols, they are allowed to practice what's in the protocols. But inside those protocols is also the medications that get carried on the truck that they're allowed to administer. As well. Or would they have to call the medical director for immediate permission for that? No. As long as it's in their protocols, they have uh, the scope and practice to actually follow that protocol. So, say a cardiac arrest patient, there's a series of what they call advanced cardiac life support drugs. So, there's a whole group of different number of drugs that they give in a specific order. So, as long as they're following within their medical protocol, then you know, they have that ability to administer those drugs and do certain procedures as well. So the EMT has decided that this person's having a heart attack? Yes. So it would be the, the paramedic is the, the highest level of EMS care on the, on the truck. So you usually have a paramedic and then an EMT. So your paramedic is your, the individual that's in the back of the truck with the, uh, the patient. Is that equivalent to a PA? It, it's under a PA. Um, 
a paramedic actually has a broader scope of practice than a nurse or even some PAs in a hospital because it's, it's pre-hospital, they work under protocols. Uh, nurses in a hospital setting are not allowed to do anything without doctor's orders. They can't even get time at all. But, I mean, we carry, you know, drugs on the truck that are very significant. Uh, and they are allowed to administer those drugs because it is a part of a protocol that is written by a doctor. Is, is that, would that also be uh, because in a hospital environment where they're not allowed to do those without uh, orders from a doctor, that there would actually be a doctor available that could give those orders, whereas no. when we go to someone's house to pick them up and try to transport them in whatever time is involved, yes. there would not be a doctor available to give those orders, so therefore they would have to be capable of making that decision and, and yeah. taking those actions on their own. Does that seem... Yes, so our paramedics are tasked with, I mean, saving lives. I mean, they're, they're put in situations with very critical patients that, you know, they have to manage that patient, manage their care, uh, try to improve their vital signs to a point to where, till they can get them either to a helicopter or they can get them to the proper receiving facility. Uh, depending on what the situation is, it, it may not go to Piedmont LJ. You know, if it's a stroke, it's going to go Kennestone or Northside Cherokee, somewhere where they can actually treat the stroke, uh, invasive, sometimes they can administer clot buster, or actually do an invasive procedure and go in and remove the clot. So yeah, if we can't get them to a, a local facility that can deal with that, we'll usually fly them or expeditiously get them via the ambulance to the proper facility. Um, there was emphasis on the medical director being available 24-7. What I'm hearing is, I haven't heard a case where you would call him, him or her. What would that case be? If they've exhausted all of their protocols and they still have not had an improvement in the patient and they wanted to seek another method or an additional round of drugs, possibly for like a cardiac arrest patient, or if they needed to maybe stop CPR. I mean, they could call either online medical control or our actual physician or medical director. And, and just to clarify, these paramedics are trained and test out. I mean, so these yes. are trained yeah, folks they who understand They're that. nationally registered, so they, they're in a clinical environment, have to do certain procedures. Um, and then they have to take state tests and pass that as well. So there's Georgia and then there's national registry as well. I, I, I think it's a great idea, especially due to our terrain and the distance from uh, some of these homes to a hospital, to be able to give a paramedic the ability to treat um, <clears throat> what they're trained to do uh, to save the life of that person.